So the first step in aligning the cartridge uh, in the head shell uh, is using a protractor to make sure that the, the cartridge is sitting in the correct position. So this is a small mirror with two grids, grid B, grid B and grid A. And in the middle of this grid, you can see that there's a small circle. Now the idea is that we place this hole in the middle over the spindle, and then we place the arm uh, over the protractor with the tip of the needle inside the circle. So if we look from the side now, we can see that when the tip of the needle is in the circle, the cartridge is perfectly straight. Uh, now we go to the front and we can see that in this situation, it's also perfectly straight. It's a bit over to the side now, like so. Like this is, it's perfect. Um, and then we move to the other point uh, and it needs to be exactly the same. So we look from the side again and we see that um, the tip of the needle is exactly in the circle, if I'm correct, yes. And then we look from the front again and we see that this is also the situation. Um, and in both these situations, the cartridge, it looks as if it's perfectly straight in the head shell. Now, if the cartridge is not perfectly straight, um, it's very easy to adjust it. You just loosen these screws a slight bit. Um, be careful with your needle, of course, um, and you can move your cartridge a bit back and forth uh, or from side to side uh, to make sure that it's sitting straight inside the head shell. So keep doing this until your cartridge is aligned as I show you here uh, and it should be perfect. So the second step in adjusting the uh, arm to the cartridge uh, is finding the right tracking force. So we have this nice scale, it comes in a nice pouch. Um, you simply slide off the top part of the scale and as you can see there's a weight added to it which reads exactly 5 grams. Uh, so you can use this weight to see if your scale is measuring correctly. Um, but we're not going to do that now. So the first step is you just simply turn on the scale. And as you can see, it takes a while, but then it reads 0.0, .0 if you leave it stationary. If it doesn't read zero in the beginning, you can hit the T, which stands for tear. Um, and then it re-centers, it uh, resets itself to zero. So as you can see here, this is uh, this is the scale bit. And there's a small circle in the middle. And this circle is made of plastic. And this circle is made of plastic as to not damage the stylus of the cartridge whenever you place it uh, on this device. So please note that you have to be very careful with your needle and make sure that the needle is never touching the metal part but it's only touching the plastic part. So we simply take the toner and slowly and steadily lower the stylus on the scale like so. And then if we look from the top you can see that it reads 2.06 um, and the recommended tracking force for this cartridge is actually two grams. So it's slightly too heavy, but the difference shouldn't be that much. Usually uh, you can look it up on the website called Vinyl Engine. Uh, you can look up the ideal tracking force recommended for your uh, cartridge. And it usually is, for example, this one is recommended between 1.75 and 2.25. So it's within the margin. But uh, for demonstration purposes, I will show you how to adjust the weight. So this is a Rega tone arm. It's a very basic design. And the way in which you adjust this tone arm is by simply screwing this weight a bit further to the back, and moving the weight further from the pivoting point, lowering the weight on the needle. So if we measure it again, we can see that it's now almost exactly two grams. Uh, and I'll leave it at this. Um, so this is a very basic design. There's also a couple of different record players, like for example, example the dual record players, which have a, uh, a knob on the side, which reads the amounts of grams. Um, you can use that, but I usually find that it's more accurate to use it in this manner because uh, you always know the exact weight. So you don't have to rely on whatever this skill is reading. And this is adjusting the anti-skating. So in this case, we have the Rega tone arm, which is quite a basic tone arm. And the anti-skating works by a magnet that moves to and from the base of the tone arm. So as you can see here, it's got three numbers on it, zero, one, and two. And we've added two grams of tracking force. So we'll also uh, add two uh, grams of anti-skating force. We'll be anti-skating on two. And as you can see, uh, 
as the anti-skating is added, the toe arm, when it's moving freely, it will move to this side. So we can see that the anti-skating is working. Now for different models of toe arms, there's different mechanisms of anti-skating. For example, most dual record players have a circle here, which you can turn, that says no, that has the numbers written on it. Or for example, for some Torrance players, there's a couple of weights, which you can adjust. Just uh, a, a line with a fishing line with a piece of weight on it. Uh, but to find out how the anti skating is adjusted for your specific model record player, I suggest you go to finalengine.com and look up the user manual, uh, which usually says how to adjust the anti skating. The next step will be correcting the uh, azimuth of the record player of the tone arm. Um, and we will need two things for this. First of all, an old record. Be careful to use an old record because you'll be uh, sliding this thing back and forth over the record and you don't want to be causing any scratches um, And you need this tool which is called an azimuth which is also sold on our website And as you can see it's basically just a piece of plexiglass with some lines on it and this allows you to very carefully uh, uh, Look at the um, the height of the tone arm so whether it's slanted forward or backward or whether it's straight and we We'll look at the tone arm from two positions. So the first position is the side to see uh, if it leans forward or backward. And the second position is the front. Now this uh, particular um, model has a fixed head shell, as you can see. So we probably won't need this, but we'll start off uh, with it anyways for good practice. So the thing here is uh, to uh, look at the cartridge from the front and as you can see this line over here below my finger is perfectly straight and matches with the uh, azimuth so we know that the tone arm is straight in this position so then we move on to the next position where we look at the tone arm from the side we are particularly interested in the interface of the of the cartridge so let me see this line here uh, above my nail and we can see that it's also perfectly straight so now we know that the cartridge is um, uh, that the tone arm is adjusted correctly for this cartridge um, if it will not be the case in this situation so if you look at it from the side you will need to adjust the height of the tone arm, which you can usually do at the base. And if it's incorrect from the front, uh, then there's another problem. It's usually has, it usually has something to do with the uh, head shell. So uh, uh, even though head shells are a very tight fit, uh, like the SME type head shell with a screw, uh, there is always some room for wiggle. Um, so if it's not correct, then I would suggest you um, Keep changing the position until it's completely flat. To recap, uh, we have started off using a protractor and we've used this protractor to align the correct uh, position of the cartridge in the head shell. Uh, this position uh, is something we have aligned in two directions, so back to front and left to right. So you want the um, Head uh, the cartridge sitting in the head shell perfectly straight um, and the lines that we uh, look at for the straightness are these lines so uh, we put the needle inside this hole here and inside this hole here the circles labeled B and A and uh, once the needle is in there we first look at it from the front uh, uh, to see whether the needle is really sitting in there and uh, then we look at it from the side and if the position is completely correct, we uh, check to see whether uh, the cartridge is aligned really straight in the head shell. So we do that by using these lines here uh, and seeing whether this ridge on the cartridge is aligned to those lines. Goes the same for the front and the side. Um, after that, we uh, have um, set, uh, set up the right tracking force. Um, so we did that by adjusting this weight. Some record players have a different system, but um, I'd recommend, uh, if it looks way different than this, I'd recommend you to uh, uh, look on the website uh, www.finalengine.com. And uh, on that website, you can download the service manual for your specific type of record player. Um, 
So some models have a, have a switch here that, that reads the number of grams. Uh, some other models, like the Technics models, uh, they have a, a, a bow here that says the correct uh, number of weight. Um, but uh, the most important thing is to always check it with this uh, tracking force skill. Uh, and if you're not sure whether the tracking force skill is reading correctly, um, uh, you can use this uh, five gram weight to uh, re uh, reset the uh, weight and see whether it's still correct. Um, okay, so after that we have uh, used this tool to uh, adjust the correct azimuth. Um, short recap, we looked at the positioning of the head shell uh, on this angle and we've looked at the positioning of the head shell from uh, this angle so from the side we can see whether it's slanted forward or uh, upward or downward and from the front we can see whether it's straight or not um, so if it wasn't straight then you adjust the the head shell usually this is the the, the case with uh, uh, adjustable head shells or head shells that you can take off um, and uh, numerous record players have a mechanism inside here, which you can use to uh, adjust the height of the base of the tone arm. Um, yeah, that was about it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the description below. Um, this whole set is uh, available with a discount on my website, so uh, uh, go check it out. Thanks for watching and good luck with adjusting your record player.